Hi Plastube, my name is Kelly and my channel is Minimalism in the Making and it has been far too long. It has been weeks, weeks since my last video. I don't know how many I didn't look, but um, I got sick. I got a cough and a sore throat and an ear infection and just all the things from like here to here um, and I couldn't I felt terrible and I also couldn't talk without coughing a lot and um, for a while I my voice was just very froggy and um, it sounded like I was croaking so um, I went on vacation which was great and I didn't get sick until after vacation so um, that was wonderful um, I guess but um, I'm better now finally I finally feel better and um, I felt better I felt better for a few days now but I didn't sound I, I was having trouble um, not coughing constantly so anyway here I am here we are um, and let's just get into it this is um, gonna have this is gonna be cross stitch and then I have a quilt that I finished um, to show and um, uh, a pair of socks that I knitted to show and that's about it the rest is cross, cross stitch and there's not a ton um, but anyway, let's just, let's see what happens. Um, oh, and first off, um, I had shown these two, I don't want to take the stickies off because then I might mix them up, but I gave these away on my last video. And so, um, Hannah Mansfield is getting this cute little, um, Peter Rabbit card kit. So, Hannah, if you can, um, I guess, private message me on Instagram. I'm minimalism in the making on Instagram as well. Um, the address that you want me to mail this to. And um, this one, Jenny Long Dog Stitcher, um, I will get this one in the mail to you as well if you can get me your mailing address. So, um, I have been, um, as I said, not feeling great, but um, I kind of got a lot of stitching done, but it was really pretty monogamous stitching, and I was able to um, finish the Transpied Tapestry, sort of. I finished my version of it. So, um, I'll just show what I've got. <clears throat> Let's see if this is not too see-through. Uh, okay, so I finished this. Um, obviously, it's not exactly like the here's, oh here's a picture oh my gosh let me just hold this up okay so I did the main part um, so I did this main unicorn and background and then I did these flowers along the bottom And then I added an Eleanor Roosevelt quote <laughs> that was just, I didn't chart it. I didn't look for an alphabet. I just backstitched it freehand, which is fine. It's fine with me. It's great as far as I'm concerned, but it does look like I wrote it in crayon when I was six. So it says, when it's better for everyone, it's better for everyone. And that is an Eleanor Roosevelt quote. Um, 
It's one of my favorite quotes. It always has been um, since as long as I could remember. But I, last year, I think, I read um, the Margaret Atwood novel. Um, uh, it's a show. And I'm Handmaid's Tale. I can't believe that I blanked on that. Anyway, so I read the her book, and there's um, a line in the book that's, where she says better doesn't mean better for everyone. It's always worse for some or something like that. And so that kind of, I, I feel like sometimes that gets kind of confused with this, but um, this is different. This is, this is a positive quote. This is um, a hopeful positive quote and that's how I that's how I see it and have always seen it and that's why I like it. Um, so anyway, that's what I put on here. Um, I did change floss colors, um, sort of, some of them. And um, I, I think I'll just put it down in the description below, like the, the floss changes, because they're pretty close. But I didn't use the metallic, um, thread DMCs in the body. I just could not. I couldn't. I couldn't deal with it. I tried. So I just used it. I used the white color and the silver color alternating in the horn of the um, DMA, the DMC metallic thread, and I just, it's awful. If you look up close, it's like, it doesn't even look like stitching. But, um, now I know that I don't like that thread, I guess, so I learned something in the process. But um, anyway, I'm really happy with this. I did, this was my favorite flower um, from the, uh, where is it, right here. That was my favorite flower. So I plan to turn this into a project bag and then I want to do one of those um, like, um, Jody on Trixie Tricycle does a little like fob for the zipper on her bags. So I'm going to turn this little part into one of those, hopefully. I don't have any project bags. I've never made one. So this will be um, hopefully my debut, my debut bag, project bag. So anyway, I got that done. And um, I'm very happy with that. See, this is this is what I used in the horn. This was supposed to be the body of the unicorn, I think. Um, and I just, I don't know if it was like the fabric I chose that it didn't like, or if that's just the way that thread always works. And I'm just not a seasoned enough stitcher to make it look right or what. But I ended up only putting it in the horn and that was plenty that was plenty frustrating just doing those few stitches with it but anyway that is um that's exciting so I um that was my oldest whip too by the way after I finished um the flea market flowers which I have yet to fully finish also um I'm thinking um, of making that into a crochet project bag. So th those two are just kind of sitting there waiting for me to get inspired enough to like look at some bag tutorials and sew some bags. Um, but anyway, those were my two oldest whips. They were both about a year old, a year and a few months now, but um, they're done. And so I, um, I went into my whips and I kind of figured out not like, I didn't spend a ton of time like really calculating, drilling dates down, but I kind of just made a, um, my best guess that this is my next oldest whip now that that one is done. And this is the months of the year horses. I've shown this about 30,000 times. Um, it's one of my oldest whips probably my oldest whip at this point and I love it I think it's super cute and I made that cute little um 
little barn, little block of wood that's kind of shaped like a barn to mount them on. So I'm doing them individually. And um, it's down in my kitchen right now and it's it's on May because I haven't done them all. And you know, it's July, it's the end of July and it's still just got the May one on. I've done um, January, February, May, and I just, um, those were previous finishes, and I just finished um, August, and I'm now working on, I don't know, let me just get these out. I'm working on March now. I'm just going all over the place. Oh, and I finished September too. Okay, so these were kind of done while I was feeling sick. So here's August. So cute. And as you can see, I'm just doing them on whatever fabric. Um, I have a lot of small pieces. And um, so my... I'm going to show these, even though there's are super super crooked mounted but I did these first two and the May one on this kind of oatmeal-y Ada which I think is 14 count um, yeah and then this is what count is that oh this is 32 count so I guess that would be equal to like a 16 count Ada. This is 32 count even weave over two. And this is 14 count um, Ada over one. So they're really close to the same size. Anyway, so really cute August. And also September. So I just figured these are so quick and so small and I've already got some done I just figured since this is my next oldest whip why not just knock these out because um that would be pretty uh easy to do I think so what is that How, okay one two three four five one two three four five so I'm on the sixth one. So I'm about halfway done. This is the one that I I have had another piece of this like oatmeal. I don't even know if it's called oatmeal, but kind of that color of Ada, the 14 count Ada. It might be 16 count. I don't know. I don't have the package anymore and I don't even know where I got it. Um, anyway, this is m March. And for a minute, I was thinking I wouldn't do the, that I would like, it would be faster just to leave off the borders, but I'm not doing that because they're just too cute. And when they're finished, I mean, you just can't not have these borders and they're all different. All the borders are a little bit different. Anyway, these are really cute. So that's what I've been working on this week. For the most part and okay I'm putting stuff up on the floor yeah so I um, haven't worked on much else uh, cross stitch wise besides those and I'm just gonna keep on trucking with that until I am done with it or I get tired of it um, I pulled a couple of charts um that i just i don't know i might start some of these so um this is sunny days it's a prairie schooler obviously and it's um on the cardstock and i just really love pretty much all of these they're just so summery and so I might do a few of these just because I'm feeling 
summary. It's hot. It's hot here, finally. Um, we're in the 90s this week. And we've been doing some, a few, like, water things. I really have been, I was in the house, like, in the house, solid for, like, two weeks. It was very, very disappointing. And, and the weather was beautiful. Um, it was very, very sad because in the Pacific Northwest, um, here, especially on the west side of Washington, here in Seattle, it's, our, um, summers are very short very short so to waste two weeks of ideal summer weather was very discouraging but anyway I'm I'm well now so we can get back out and doing some water stuff and I don't know I like that crab I really like that guy that's a goal anyway so yeah I think I'm gonna do some of these and I have some Ada that looks almost the exact same color. I also have this weird piece that I, um, I dyed it. I don't know what I did to it. Um, I can't remember, but it's got, you probably can't see it on the camera, but it's got kind of, it's like off white or ivory. And then it's got kind of a, um, little bit of a blue modeling on it but it's really faded and I can't remember I can't remember what like this was an accidental I don't know I can't remember what happened with this oh I know I got some secondhand Ada that um, I soaked in oxyclean or vinegar or something yeah because it was um, it was kind of, it just smelled kind of like it had been in an old box for a long time. It wasn't smoky or anything like that. It just kind of smelled a little bit like just old and a little musty. And um, so I soaked, I had a navy blue piece and um, this like ivory and I just put them in a bucket together. And so this one got some of the blue um, from the darker piece in it and it actually it's just kind of cool so I could put four of these four of those probably on this so I might do that that just seems like some fun like beach beach stitching and I also pulled out and I don't even I'm not really in the mood for this yet but I pulled out I just feel like I will be soon um, I think this is gonna be my first um, spooky stitch of the year. So this is, <clears throat> it's a freebie from La the La Dee Da website um, from 2008, but I just got it recently, so it should still be there. It's really cute. And I am, what is it, 54 by 97. It's small it's cute and I have this really this was another gift from Jody but I've got this really cool fabric that is a 36 count and it just seems like it would be perfect for some spooky stitching something that's like solid black would look really good on this um, so I have a lot more than just, than I would need for just this little freebie piece. So I'll have to look for something else. To, I have a whole bunch of prairie, prairie schooler Halloween type stuff. So I might put one of those on this too. Anyway, so I got that out just because it's like, I don't want to think about fall yet because I feel like my summer just started. Um, but I'm just anticipating that I'll probably start doing that one first when it comes to like fall stitching um okay that might be it for cross stitch um I just I got I feel like I got a lot done but it was just really on like two things um but I also finished my um I finished so if you're just here for cross stitch that's gonna be it 
I probably forgot some big thing that I did, but I, I just, um, that's all I have for today. So if, if you're just here for that, thanks for watching and I will see you next time. Um, if you want to stick around for some quilting and some knitting briefly, um, I I'm trying to find the name of this pattern. Oh, you know what? This is the one that doesn't have a title. So that so I printed the pattern out and there's you know what? The garbage truck is coming up the block. I might I might edit a clip out if it gets loud because I don't want to close that window. Um <coughs> Uh, yeah, it's, I can't find the title. I don't think it's on here. But this pattern is by Nicole Bracey. And um, her Ravelry, I think I got this from Ravelry. And the name of her shop is Wool Field, all one word. And these are really, um, it was a great pattern for ankle socks. And I'm pretty sure um, yeah I'm pretty sure yeah th these are actually designed to be ankle socks I was thinking maybe it was a full sock and I just shortened it but no these are real um, ankle socks so Nicole Bracey on Ravelry Woolfield is her shop name I think or her pattern patterns shop name but I made, I don't have any sock blockers. I think I want to get some because um, I'm going to make some more socks because this was super fun and easy. And um, this is a heel flap and gusset type heel. Um, but they do fit my feet and they are comfortable, but they are wool. So I'm going to save them for the fall. Okay, the other, so that was, that's all. I haven't even cast anything new on. Um, I just bought a, um, I have a pattern to do a tank top um, that is made out of cotton yarn. And um, it's this gray color. So I haven't cast it on yet, but that's going to be my next knitting project. And hopefully I'll have it done in time to actually wear it this season. Um, it's just a sleeveless um, top or tank, tank top. I can't remember how wide or narrow the shoulders are. But anyway, I, I might need to push this back a little bit. So that's it for knitting. Um, I am crocheting something, but it's, I just realized it's not in this room. I'm not going to show it right now, but, um, <clears throat> I finished this, uh, how can I do this? I think I already showed this quilt top. No, I didn't. Okay. Let me see. I'm going to move my chair. And if I move my chair, then I think I can stand up and show this. Okay. So it is. There's a corner and there's the other corner. So it's five blocks by, I can't even remember, six I think. One, two, three, four. Wait, one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, so it's five by six. So this is the, vertical way. I know you can't see the whole thing at one time, but that's the gist of it. Oh no. See, this is the kind of stuff that you're not supposed to 
I swear, I laid these out on the floor and looked at them forever and switched them around and took pictures and switched them around again. And of course, like it never fails that there's gonna be two of the same right next to each other, but whatever. Okay, I'm gonna show you from the other end. There it is. And I, um, I ordered some um, 108 inch backing for this and I am, I miscalculated. I miscalculated. So I ordered, the idea of ordering 108 inch backing is so that you don't have to sew big pieces of fabric together to make a backing. So I ordered this with the intention of just slapping it on the back and being done with it. And I ended up being short in what, like my measurements were wrong. So I, I got this, it wasn't quite enough. So thank goodness I had some extra. Um, and this is all Lori Holt flea market flowers fabric or flea market fab, uh, uh, I don't know. I, didn't, I can't remember if it's just flea market or flea market flowers, but anyway, this is the fabric line. The only thing that's not is the solid gray that I use for sashing. I think this solid gray is a Kona solid, but anyway, thank goodness I had some of this, like so, big enough chunks, but I had to like piece these together. This was not just like one big strip. I had to like cut and piece and like, it was rough. I didn't, and I had to do that on both ends. So anyway, so much for having an easy backing. But I did do a fun scrappy binding. So <clears throat> this is my fun scrappy binding. Some of these pieces are longer than others. Most of them are this kind of, oh, there's a long one. And luckily with my scrappy binding, I didn't have any seams on the corners. I've never done a binding this scrappy before. So I'm really happy with that. That was fun to do. And it just makes the quilt look even scrappier and more fun. So. Um, this is like a, I don't know, it's like 65 by 70, something like that, somewhere along those lines. Um, perfect for picnics and throws, and um, you could probably put it on a bed, a twin or a queen, but it's not going to fit perfectly. <clears throat> so, <sighs> all right, I have to wrestle with my chair now. in a tight spot. Okay, that's it. That's all I've got today. So um, thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. And um, I will, uh, I think that's it. I always, I always think I'm, I always think I'm missing something or forgetting something, but I don't think I am. I think this is just a short video. So thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Bye.